Hey Fly Tires, welcome back. I'm Matt, thanks for stopping by the channel. Now I've got a pretty fun and really historic pattern for you today. This one was created in the 1940s by Pat Barnes. It's called the Sofa Pillow. Now I'd asked a lot of you guys out there a couple of weeks ago if anybody has ever heard of this fly or fished it, and I was actually surprised that several of you have, and a few of you have actually fished it before. So a little bit about Pat Barnes. He and his wife, Sig, ran a fly shop for about 40 years in West Yellowstone, Montana, and Pat actually got his start working in Don Martinez's shop as a tire and guide for Don. Some of you might know Don. He's a true legend of Western fly fishing and fly tying. I mean, Mike Valla has a chapter on him in his book, The Founding Flies. So how did this pattern come about? Well, Pat tells a story that some Texas bass fishermen came out west to fish the Snake River and asked Pat to tie up something that they could actually see. So he came up with this big stonefly imitation, and one of them looked at it and said, My God, that's as big as a sofa pillow. And I guess Pat said, Well, that's as good a name as any. There you go. And the fly's done pretty well. It's been pretty popular out there since. There is an improved version of it. We'll tie that a little later on. It's called the improved sofa pillow. But today, we're going to tie Pat Barton's original sofa pillow, and it's a pretty cool pattern. I think you're going to like it. Let's give it a shot. So there's one in the vise, Pat Barnes sofa pillow. Now this is a pretty big stonefly imitation. I'm tying this on a size 10. It's actually a 3x long streamer hook. And some of the recipes called for a 4x long hook. So I'm going to put down a base of brown 70 denier UTC, almost to the start of the bend. Now for the tail, either duck or goose, dyed red, just a couple of slips of this. The cool thing about this, you can take these from the same, you don't have to get a, a right and a left, you can take it from the same feather, just two little slips here, and you can get it from the, you know, the junky part of the feather. So measure about a hook gap right there. I'm going to um, do a little pinch wrap, pinching the hook and my material, just kind of pull it down right there. Almost like you'd be doing a, a wet fly wing. A couple of wraps, check and make sure you're off the top of the hook. That's fine right there. Now I'm going to let my thread flatten out for a second and just keep this excess right here, make that part of my underbody. So loose wraps up here, just trying to keep this smooth. Okay, that's probably smooth enough, but you know what? I'm just going to take some tighter wraps going back to really bind this in and then take my thread back up to the front where I'm going to catch in the red floss for the body. So just some standard red floss right here. Catch it in up here where we're going to tie in the wing. Now if you have a rotary vise this is a good time to use it. If not just take your time just put a smooth base down take it all the way down and all the way back to the front. Now watch your point of the hook when you get to the back, but on this pass going back up, you can let your floss flatten out a little bit. It might help you get a smoother body. Okay, let's catch this off up front with a couple of thread wraps. Now don't worry if you have any lumps, especially up here at the front, as we're going to tie in the the wing almost a third of the way back. So hang your thread about right there and take a decent sized piece of red fox squirrel tail, red fox squirrel tail. And I always take about maybe one and a half times as much as I think I'm going to need, maybe about that big a clump right there. I'll put it in my stacker. Now, squirrel hair does stack pretty well because it's so slippery, I guess, which also makes it a little bit harder to use. So that stacked pretty good right there. I'm going to pull this out. And then what I will do, gauge my thickness. This is a little more than I want, so I'm just going to grab it by the tips and then try to pull out some of this, the shorter fibers. And that will thin it out maybe by about a third. So that is about as big a thick a piece as I want. But one thing I forgot, I'm going to put a little bit of wax right here. It might help. Uh, 
Debatable whether it helps or not when you're wrapping this wing, but it can't hurt. So measure your length. You want the tail to be, or the wing to be back to the back of that tail. So I'm gonna grab it with my material hand, pull it up a little bit. I'm gonna put one wrap just around the fur, just around the hair, and then keeping my pinch wrap, pulling down right here. And then I'm gonna do another wrap before I let go and take a look at it. Make sure it's still coming off the top. It is coming off the top, it hasn't spun around on me yet. You gotta be careful or it still will. But now I can put some tighter wraps going forward. And a minute ago I broke my thread on this step, so just be careful. Also, what you can remember, if you end up with that wing laying too flat, just lift it up and put a wrap or two up under it. I don't think I need to in this case, so I'm gonna leave it as is. Now, after we've got a couple more tight wraps going forward, I'm gonna take my stronger, beefier scissors here, and if you just lifted this up and cut it, you'd be in, you might risk spinning that uh, wing around. So sometimes what I'll do here, I will just lift this up and then cut a little bit at a time. See what I'm doing right there? It's not putting too much torque on the, the wing and it will get it. So we got that cut down and I'm just going to slowly try to, to ramp it down and make it as smooth of a transition as possible. Uh, it will help when we're putting this hackle in. So this is this squirrel hair, squirrel tail. It's, it doesn't have a whole lot of give to it. So it's a pretty firm material. Um, it might take some extra thread wraps, but go ahead and spend the time to get a nice smooth flat area where we can wrap the hackle. Okay, that took a few wraps, but uh, it was probably needed. So next up, take your brown dry fly hackle. I'm gonna catch it in. I've stripped off uh, a few of the fibers there, and I'm gonna catch it in with a concave side toward the hook, right here to the back of this head. I'm gonna pull it up a little bit. I need to start the wraps a little farther back from where I am, so maybe right there. I think that's gonna be fine right there. And just go ahead and catch this stem in up there. I'm gonna go ahead and trim this excess off. And maybe bury that little bump right there. But leave my thread hanging right there. That's probably where I'm gonna stop wrapping the hackle. Take my hackle pliers and just take your time wrapping this right here. I might not need the hackle pliers on this one. I've got about five inches of feather, but I'm gonna also put five or six good wraps here. It's pretty bushy hackle fly. Okay, I think that's enough hackle on this. That might have been seven turns or so, but it's no worry. That's about how much I want. Now, two thread wraps to catch it off, and let's go ahead and snip this excess off right here. I'm gonna be careful. It's almost started slipping back on me, but I could either trim these that are pointing forward or just try to pull them back and then trap them. Give me a little bit of room for a head and a whip finish here. Oh, some of them pop back forward again. So I'm gonna just try and trim these. Now take my thread right back to the eye and then build a little ramp up. And we're not gonna to go too far back, just far enough where I could get a good whip finish on. We 
which I think that will work right there. Let's see if we can work a whip finish in here without trapping any extra fibers. And uh, there we go. I've got a couple of stray pieces from my thread right there, just some sm small fibers to trim and a drop of head cement. And Pat Barnes sofa pillow is done. So I might just have a little bit more cleanup. But overall, pretty simple pattern to tie and a pretty cool looking fly. So that's it, my friends. I appreciate you watching. Y'all take care and we'll see you next time.